In this video, we're gonna create a part template that'll help us out when we're designing molded parts. So right now we have a blank part file open using our standard template set to metric. And what we need to do is start adding some detail to this that'll help us out when we're designing our molded parts. Since there are so many different design guidelines when you're creating molded parts, it makes sense to add some global variables such as wall thickness, the percentage of that wall that your ribs can be, draft angle, and so on. That way when you're designing these parts, you're not manually entering these numbers in every time. This also helps when you have to change your design. For instance, if you design an entire part with one degree of draft, you find out later on that it has to have three degrees of draft because of a surface finish that needs to be applied to the outside. You can quickly make a change to your global variable that will affect the entire part document. That way you can easily change the draft angle in your global variables rather than going through and finding every feature where that draft angle would be located and manually modifying those. Now, of course, you can do this with other things such as linked variables while you're creating your part, but it makes a lot of sense to create a generic part template that you can modify at the beginning of your design with the desired specifications. So to get started, let's go to our tools menu and go down to equations. We wanna get started adding global variables. Now, when I do this typically, I won't write out things such as wall thickness or rib thickness. I'll typically use some sort of abbreviation. In this case, I'm gonna type everything out just so it's clear what we're doing. So I'm gonna type wall thickness, I'm gonna hit the enter key, and then what we'd like to do is just give the wall thickness a number. So in this case, let's assume that we're gonna use three millimeters for our wall thickness. So I simply hit enter. Now you'll note that this evaluates the three millimeters and we have the available option to add a comment. Because I made the global variable so descriptive by calling it wall thickness, I don't really have a need for a comment. So let's create some more global variables. Let's create one that's called rib thickness. Now for rib thickness, you'll notice that instead of just having functions, file properties, and measure, I now have a global variable section. Now what I would like to do is create a rib thickness that is 60% of my wall thickness. So I can simply select wall thickness, my multiplication sign, and 0.6. Now hit enter, you'll notice that my rib thickness is evaluated to 1.8. And again, because my global variable name is so descriptive, I'm not gonna add any comments. Next, we wanna create a variable that's called draft. Now, because our file has a metric standard with it, the wall thickness, when I set it to three, if I use it as an actual thickness value, it's gonna be three millimeters. But for draft, I'm gonna go ahead and hit three and hit enter. And even though it's evaluated to three, this is just a number. It doesn't actually have a unit. So if I use it as a draft, it's going to be three degrees rather than three millimeters. So that's important to note. And again, the name is descriptive, so we're not gonna add any comments. The next thing I wanna do is create a variable for the boss diameter. So boss diameter is going to be a number. And in this case, let's go ahead and just say our boss is gonna be four millimeters. So now we wanna create a variable that is the thickness of our boss. So we're gonna just type in boss thickness, and this value is going to be three times our boss diameter. So we can simply multiply that by three, and you can see the boss thickness is 12. Now, we might be thinking our boss thickness, it's not really gonna be 12 millimeters, because that would be ridiculous. Our wall thickness is only three millimeters. So that means there's a mistake here, and we need to modify that. So let's take a look at our design guideline and see what was actually supposed to go here. So if we go back to our design guideline for bosses, you'll notice that our diameter is listed here, and this is actually the outside diameter of our boss is three times the inside diameter. So it's not determining the wall thickness, but really the outside diameter. So let's go back to our SOLIDWORKS file and note that boss thickness actually needs to be boss outside diameter. So now we can note that the outside diameter of our boss is 12 millimeters rather than the thickness being 12 millimeters. The next thing we wanna add is a boss depth value. Now the boss depth value is important because remember we're dealing with draft. And once we create a boss, the farther up we take it, the thinner that section's going to get. And the very tip of our boss is gonna be where a screw's gonna be inserted or an insert's gonna get pressed in. So it's important that we understand that we have certain limitations of these. So our boss depth is gonna be 70% of the wall thickness. So we wanna to go to our global variables, grab wall thickness, and we wanna multiply this by 0 
so that means our boss depth can be no more than 2.1 millimeters. Well, that seems a little off, so again, let's go back to our design guideline and make sure that we're using the appropriate values. So the height of our boss, in this case, can be no more than five times the thickness. And what we actually determined was our boss depth is 70% of the wall thickness. So the value that we entered is actually the point at which the boss can go down in here. Because we have to keep a consistent wall thickness, we don't want to have any thick sections, we need to create an extruded section that goes down past the thickness of our part. So we may need to create a comment or rename this boss thickness value to really describe what we're actually creating. So let's go back to SolidWorks and see if we can figure out a better name for this than boss depth. So let's call this boss end depth. Now, if we have to understand this a little bit better, we can say this as our extrude past our thickness. So we can always come back to these values and rename them or change the comments if we have problems with them farther down the road. But it's important whenever you're dealing with these types of variables that you come up with some sort of nomenclature or some sort of table of the types of values are going to be used. Like wall thickness might just be T or WT or rib thickness would be RT. So let's add a few more things that we really need to have in this template. So we want to add a minimum radius value. And this minimum radius value is going to be our wall thickness times 0.25% or 25% of our wall thickness. The next thing we want to add is an internal radius. So as we mentioned in our design guideline, our internal radius is actually going to be 50% of the wall thickness. So again, it's wall thickness times 0.5. Now you'll notice how many different variables are actually relating back to that wall thickness. And this would be a lot harder to do on the fly using linked variables and creating equations on the fly when you know these are standard. You're not creating these kinds of things just off the top of your head. There's a very standardized process that goes into these. Let's just add one more and then we can save this. So we want an external radius and that's gonna be our wall thickness. And this time it's gonna be times 1.5. So you can see we have all these values are evaluated. That means that we have everything entered properly. So we can hit OK. And now what we want to do is actually save this. So I'm going to go up to Save As. And instead of a part file, what we want to do is save it as a part template. This automatically is going to go into your template files. You see we have a part.prtdot. What we want to do is name this something that we're going to be able to relate to. So we can say, mold part underscore mm because it is metric and simply hit enter. We're going to close this file out. We're going to start a new file. So now you'll note in my new SOLIDWORKS document templates, I have standard part assembly and drawing, but I also have mold part mm. So I hit okay and you'll notice that there's an equations folder and all of these equations are populated. If we go to tools down to our equations manager, you can see that everything here is populated. Now you can see that boss end depth has an exclamation point by it. And this is the only one that has a comment. If we delete that comment and hit OK, you'll notice that it goes away. For whatever reason, you're going to get a warning next to the global variable icon whenever you have a comment in there. Because I didn't resave it as a template, that comment is going to come back up whenever we create a new file. So that's a quick and easy way to take care of all those long and complicated formulas that you need whenever you're designing molded parts. Because we now have a molded part template, we can always come in here to our equations. Let's say our part is actually going to be five millimeter wall thickness. Everything that is determined by the wall thickness now updates based on that. And this doesn't affect our part template. This only affects the current part that we have open. It's a great way to handle this whenever you're dealing with these types of parts.